And it's time for the B A Q A. The B A Q A. Okay, the B A Q A. You say the B A Q A. No way. Welcome to the Brown Ambition Question and Answer, where you have questions and we have answers ish, meaning we're not your mama. We're not your attorney. We're not your financial advisor. We're two smart brown girls who just have opinions. Take it with a grain of salt. (laughs) Huge grain of salt. Also, I I feel like we're maybe a little bit better of a source than your mother. You know, shout out to mom. I mean, unless your mother is like, you know, a financial advisor, (laughs) but you know, my bad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, y'all. Cannot wait to take your questions. This week is going to be some juicy, juicy career questions. So you know I'm fired up. But before we jump into it, just a reminder about how you can get your question featured on Brown Ambition. Hit us up at Brown Ambition Podcast on IG. And you can also email us at brownambitionpodcast at gmail.com. Dot or com. one-stop shop, go to Brown Ambition Podcast at – no, go to brownambitionpodcast.com. Shoot us your questions, anything money and career related. We love to see it. Do let us know if you want to be anonymous. If you do, make it fun. Choose a pseudonym. You know, <laughs> we don't want to be anonymous, Annie's, right? Fine. Be a little yes. different. Give us a pseudonym. Yes. <laughs> Call yourself something funny and crazy. The duck lady. I don't know. Like, for example, I'm looking, Mandy, you see, I'm looking inside the um the doc that we're reading from, and it's someone is anonymous yeah. goose. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Oh, dang. I should have chose her question or their question. Anonymous. No, no, no. I'm saying like that. That's what someone who's in the doc right now, who's like, you know, on our team, like they're like, oh, you know. Oh, yeah. Google is funny. Yes. It's like this is anonymous, anonymous goose. Bark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, let's jump on in. Got some really juicy questions today. First question comes from listener who wants to go by B. All right, Queen B. Queen B says, Mandy and Tiffany, I'm looking for some career advice. Hearing how astute you ladies are, well, thank you. When it comes to careers, here's a question for you. I recently taken up a position in February of this year. It was a step up both in salary and career prospects. It even comes with the benefit of working from home twice a week. Nice. However, after starting the job, it became clear that aspects for moving up in the company are slim to none. People have worked here for many years and have never been promoted. They're stuck in the same place and now just a few years from retirement waiting for that faithful day. It's a retirement haven. Everyone is an elderly person and my career is just starting. Not to mention the company is having a hard time hiring others. This means we're understaffed, which places a lot of pressure and stress on us. It even turned my boss into a major jerk who sometimes shoots subliminal shots in her emails and in team meetings. It's annoying and I already know I can't stay there anymore. However, I recently started to network and somehow got connected to a job opportunity that has turned into an offer. This opportunity is with a large company with a worldwide presence. The job allows me to work from home every day and has similar benefits. Not to mention this opportunity is already a step up in career growth as I'm being hired into a managerial role. So here's my question. What should I do about my current job? How do I leave that job without cutting any connections off and seemingly quitting on them? I worked and waited a while before I got that job in February, and I'm wondering what should I do? Okay, B, that story has a pretty happy, has a pretty happy end. We can take a step (laughs) off. You solved your own damn problem. Can we do it? Let's do a little shoulder shimmy for B. Come on, Mandy. A little shoulder shimmy for B. Okay. (laughs) Yes. Well, not only did you, you, the networking piece, I love that because I'm always telling people like applying for jobs is not it. Applying for jobs is all cute, but the best job opportunities, especially when you're wanting to advance in your career, the juiciest jobs are not on Indeed and they're not on LinkedIn. I know it's hard to hear that because it seems like the game is rigged. Well, a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. There's so much competition now for the great candidates out there that jobs Mm. are waiting before they post. Hiring managers are in, and recruiters are waiting to post jobs because they want to do their own recruiting first. They don't want to post on Indeed and get 75,000 you know, resumes from people who are not a good fit. They want to be meticulous and intentional with their search. So the fact that you networked into a potentially new opportunity, like snaps for you, B. Yes. That's amazing. Now, how do I love how she said, how do I leave a job and seemingly quitting on them? seemingly quit no you're just actually <laughs> quitting <laughs> and it's okay yes quit oh, is not a four-letter word people treat well, quit like it's a four-letter word I'm it's, like, it is a four-letter word but i know what you mean it's not a cuss <laughs> it's not a it's not you know a dirty word the the level of not even wanting to admit that you quit listen 
storytelling, I feel like is so important when it comes to our careers and explaining why we are leaving one opportunity for the next. And your story that you've told us is a valid reason to be looking for a new opportunity. And I would, as respectfully as you can, explain that to your boss, explain it to, you know, in your exit interview, what it was about this position that did not quite meet the expectations that you had when you were hired. And you now have an opportunity that does. So why would you leave that opportunity on the table? Also, it seems like you have done some thinking around like longevity. You know, is there Mm -hmm. a chance that they will actually be able to meet this offer and give you opportunities that you can see clearly are not available to you? Probably not. Mm. So I'm just hearing, I'm hearing so many reasons for you to walk away. I just think you need someone to like give you permission. And uh, Tiffany, you think we can give permission? Can we do that? Girl, do it. Well, question. I do have a question. Magic wand. (laughs) I want my magic wand. I'm going to give her permission. (laughs) Go ahead. Give her permission. All right, go. <laughs> so, question for you, Mandra: Do do people still yeah. do the two weeks? Like, should she do that? Like, is that still a thing? It's still a thing. You know what's funny is like there is nothing written in your employment contract that says you mm-hmm. have to give two weeks. There's it's called at will employment, which means mm-hmm. at when you are willing to work, you will work there until you're no longer willing to work, and when mm-hmm. they are willing to have you, they will be willing to have you until they're no longer willing to have you. Um, But of course, two weeks notice is one way to quit without burning those bridges. And depending on the level um, that you're at in your company and whether you manage a team or how Mm -hmm. potentially irreplaceable or difficult to replace you, I think everyone's replaceable, honestly. But if it would be difficult for them to replace you or you are overseeing a major project and you have a lot of responsibilities, the best thing to do to ease the blow is to offer as much time as you feel comfortable so that you can help with their transition. So a thousand percent offer to help with the transition, whether it's two weeks or, you know, four weeks or six weeks, I've seen sometimes too, Mm -hmm. but make sure you're firm. I mean, if you're not willing, I will say this, a quick way to burn a bridge is to quit and then give them or turn in your notice. And then they'll be like, well, what if we can match it? Let me go work on this new offer for you. And then for you to turn down their competitive offer at that point, I think feelings and emotions and grudges start to form. I think you have to go into that conversation sometimes with as clear a mind as possible as to whether or not they even can compete. You know, is there anything they could offer you that would make you stay and be clear on that before you walk in? Um, that's that's mm, how I would say, because you just good. don't want to drag anyone on. That's and you don't want to drag on the company on. that's giving you an offer either. Yes. Oh, that's good. Because you don't think about that. Because see, my... Um, scary self would be like, sure, make me an offer, even though I have no intentions of taking it because I feel I would feel scared to say, no, there's nothing that would keep me. So that's actually really wise to be like, if you know for a fact that you really want to be at this other company, don't let these people go through the due diligence of doing all this work, you know, set the boundaries. I'm actually listening to this new book. Well, it's not new because this book has like been exploding. Have you heard this? Um, what is it called? Let me see on my, let me see what my, my trusty Audible account says. It's everything is written by a black um, therapist because, of course, she's amazing. That's the title? Um, the, no, no. It's called oh. Set Boundaries, Finding Peace. Have you heard of this book? Mm-mm. It's by Nirdra Glover uh, Tawab. She's on Insta and has like a million followers, but she's this black um, therapist who's amazing. And this book came out last year and it sold already hundreds of thousands of copies. She's going to sell over a million copies, I could tell. Um, but it's just really helpful from a therapist perspective, obviously, about how to set boundaries and what it looks like. If you're mm-hmm. like, I don't have a boundaries issue. And she's like, mm, sounds like you do, but it's really good. And like, I encourage you to get the um, the uh, audible um, version just because I like listening. But yeah, so what it sounds like Mandy's saying is like, you want to set clear boundaries. So that way, um, as the great philosopher Wendy Williams once said, straight talk leads to straight understanding. You know, like, <laughs> yes. don't Radical get that wishy-washy. Get that wi- yeah, that wishy-washy, oh, maybe kind of. It's like, no, no, if you don't plan on staying, then letting them know. And that's really great advice. And then, you know, moving on, sis, I'm really proud of you. You sound like a young mm-hmm. woman who is on the move. Who? So go ahead and be on the move. But to Mandy's point, Let try it- not to burn those bridges. Yeah, and also focusing on a lesson, like, and carrying that lesson with you into your next opportunity Though the what you realized about this job, I would argue you might have been able to ascertain during the interview mm. process if you ask the right questions. Mm. And sometimes we do kind of talk ourselves into opportunities. It pays more, just take it. But I'm sure that the fact that people at the company have been there for 
you know, years, decades that they're, I don't want to, I don't think the fact that people are older should necessarily be a reason to be turned off by it. But the fact that they stay there for a long time, there's not, there's not much room for advancement and that there may be a, a short staffing. I think you can definitely ask questions that would give you those types of answers in your interview. So I think it's a really good reminder of the importance of being particular about the types of questions you ask during the interview process so that you really do know what you're getting yourself into. And you are gently not allowing them to put rose colored glasses on or lipstick on a pig, whatever the expression is of your choice. (laughs) Um, And hopefully you've done the same for this new opportunity. It sounds awesome. And, you know, it's everything that they're not giving you. But what questions can you ask just so you don't end up being in the same position again? What you learning, sis? You growing, you learning. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, good luck. Congrats. I've quit jobs two weeks after joining. So you're Girl. talking to a pro. <laughs> Not a single bridge burned. Not a single one. <laughs> hey, 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 BA fam. Did you know that support for Brown Ambition comes from our partner and friends at Avast? It sure does. Avast empowers you with digital safety and privacy, which we all could use, no matter who you are, where you are, or how you connect. Avast prevents over 1.5 billion with a B attacks every single month. Avast new all-in-one solution, Avast One, helps you to take control of your safety and privacy online through a range of features. Avast One's data breach monitoring lets you find out if your online accounts have been compromised and whether your passwords need to be changed. I'm here to say they do need to be changed, sis. I mean... I know your birthday and your middle name already. (laughs) Ransomware protection secures your personal photos, documents, and other files from being modified, deleted, or encrypted by ransomware attacks. Personally, I like the way a vast firewall protection keeps my personal information secure and stops attacks trying to get on my computer. Learn more about Avast One at avast.com. And we're black with the BAQA with another question. I see the name is anonymous, honestly. But actually, I see a <laughs> name in here that she basically calls herself her Oprah. So we're going to call you Oprah girl. Mandy's going to read the, the question for it. us. And we're, we're going to just call her Oprah. Go ahead, Mandy. All right. Hey, Mandra and Tiffany. I am a black, queer, postpartum professional. What does that mean? A postpartum? Does she work with people? Or- people who have had babies or I wasn't sure yeah she just had a baby and that's what I was I thought she had just had a baby but yeah I'm not sure let me keep reading I'm 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 intrigued I'm a black (laughs) queer postpartum professional my work used to fire me up I would stay up late teaching myself new skills and the challenges gave me focus in my professional circle I was constantly mentoring younger entrants to the field Folks often noted my Oprah and the praises felt so damn validating my career just seemed to flow That fire is so stifled lately. I still feel effective, but my Oprah is hardly apparent. And I'm scared because I don't know how to scale back. I tried cutting expenses, reducing hours at work, and taking more vacation days, but I'm just completely blown. My mental and emotional reserves are done, sis. I need a deep recovery from secondary trauma exposure. How does someone Mm -hmm. work less and still write all those bill checks? Have you experienced a season where you still felt deeply rooted in purpose, but your personal and individual devotion was just, let me pronounce this correctly, tired? Mm-hmm. Brown heart, Oprah, anonymous Oprah. So for first, when Oof. I just say this real quick, like I think that she's calling herself Oprah because I have this thing that I do with my mentees, light plug. If you want to be my yes. mentor, my mentee, you can go to mymentortiffany.com. I'll be mentoring, especially women in business and entrepreneurship. It's 10 bucks a month, child. So I have this thing that we talk about all the time with my mentees called illustrate your Oprah. That means just illustrate your value in a way that's so undeniable you cannot be denied. You know, so for example, when I first used to start speaking and people wouldn't pay me and they'd be like, oh, we don't have the budget. And so at first I believed that and then I would see them paying other people and I'm like, oh, you just don't want to pay me. And I could get mad or I could say, that's because you have not illustrated your Oprah. Because I bet you, if if you were Oprah, they pay you. And it's true. Of course, they would pay the $300,000, $500,000, $5,000 if I was Oprah. So I started this phrase, illustrate your Oprah. Bring your undeniable value to the table. And, you know, then people will find the funds. So I think that's, I just wanted to just put that out there. So it sounds like a postpartum. So she said secondhand trauma. So maybe she's helping people with postpartum and that's why she's experiencing the secondhand trauma. It exposure. could be. 
so yeah, she says secondhand trauma. That could very well be. You know what this sounds like to me is mm-hmm. when you are so service driven as a professional, mm-hmm. and I see this happen with so many of my coaching clients, you give so much away and you have all the energy you need in the early mm-hmm. parts of your career. Mm-hmm. And eventually you get worn down and eventually mm-hmm. you break and mm-hmm. you you can't do it anymore because the pace that you were working at originally was never sustainable. Mm-hmm. Like you were never going to be able to hold that up. And it does feel good. And I have I have been there in my career for sure, mm-hmm. um, where, you know, I have this like breaking moment. I had this um, this breakdown, you know, halfway into my ad, into my my new job as a senior content director. Where I was managing a team and building it from scratch. Walk into my office. I think I've told the story before. I walked into my boss's office, you know, and close to tears. Like I can't do it anymore because I had been doing the work of like five people mm. or more for two years, just trying to make it work, thinking I had to do it alone. Mm. And it felt really good the first year. By year two, I was ready to quit. I wanted to cry in my boss's office. I just hadn't figured out how to ask for the help that I needed. And I think that that is a, it's an, a really important skill to learn early in our careers, okay. so that you don't end up getting yourself to that breaking point and that you recognize we can't let ourselves to your point about boundaries, Mm -hmm. being, being open to setting boundaries before they're needed. Yes. You know, that's hard because everything feels fine. You feel great. Oh, I'm making Mm -hmm. it work. You don't need a boundary. You will do it for your future self. Yep. Your future. What's a, if, if the Oprah is your best self, I don't know what the opposite of Oprah is. My, but, my, Wanda is my old, my, my future old lady self, Wanda. <laughs> yeah, do, it for do, Wanda. It for, do it for your future old lady self. But yeah, I mean, unfortunately, that seems to be what happened. Now, how can you scale back and find that re, you know, find that energy again? This is when, and the point of burnout for you is so deep, a vacation mm. ain't going to do it. Yeah. You know, you're going to come back in a few days. And just the same problems, the same lack of boundaries are going to be mm-hmm. waiting for you. It has to go deeper than that. If it's such, if it's so tough for you, one thing that you could look into is taking a mental health leave of absence. Mm-hmm. If you work for a company and your employer um, offers leaves of absences, you can actually get a note from a medical professional. It can be your primary mm-hmm. care physician or a therapist saying that you are unable to work due to mental health strain or whatever their language is. I've seen clients do that. And Mm -hmm. sometimes you may get paid for it. You may have to take short-term disability, which is a cut in pay. It could be like 60%. You work Mm -hmm. with postpartum people, so you know. When we give birth, typically we're only getting paid 60% because we're suddenly disabled. Anyway, (laughs) another conversation, another day. But taking a mental health leave of absence, if you can get some sort of pay, can help with that. And hopefully that will give you the time you need to recharge. But think about, I love my friend Marisa. She always says, that sometimes we give too much to people who really are not asking for that much, mm. you know, and starting to practice doing less because we can and not overachieving every day. Everything God. does not require 110 pre- damn percent. Like, yes. <laughs> some things can be just okay. Yes. Marisa, what does she say? She's like, do, she was like, um, delight them with the bare minimum. Sometimes they can be <laughs> delighted with the bare minimum. This yes. is when I was doing my consulting project, my early consulting days. And she's like, listen, baby, these PowerPoints, these decks that you're making yourself do, did they ask for it? I know. No, but I want to impress them. No, delight them with the bare minimum. I got to ask her for the exact <laughs> quote. I but yeah, that. it's too many of us giving 110 and that 10% adds up. Girl. Mm-hmm. And it adds so up and wears would- you down. I'll add to this, like, um, especially the part about have I experienced a season um, when, you know, I'm still rooted in purpose, but yeah, just now I'm in that season now. After Jarrell passed away, I was like, I can't, I can't do it. I cannot go back to that Tiffany who was always on, always gave 110%. I physically cannot do, I don't have it in me. And so it forced my hand to reimagine what life looked like because I had told myself that less equaled lazy. And that's not true. Uh, that like, oh, nope. well, girl, if you could be working, like what you doing sitting on the couch? What are you doing relaxing? You took a walk. Why, girl? Because you know you could do this, this, this. And it, I'm still struggling with it because with it, certainly there are days who where I'm just like, oh, maybe I should. And I'm like, like, so for example, like my Patreon, right? I was like, woohoo. 
I, my, my aim was a thousand people by the end of the year, we got a thousand people within 24 hours of it launching. So then I was like, well, old Tiffany was like, well, then 5,000 by the end of the year. And I'm like, sis, you said a thousand by the end of the year because you wanted to make at least a hundred thousand dollars after their 8% fee or whatever they take, because you wanted to fund Molly Moore, your children's book project, which is, um, you know, a, a passion project and you want to fund it not out of pocket. You wanted to make just enough to fund it, not to stress yourself out. And now you don't put this new, if I could do 5,000 people, then 10,000. No, 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 no. I had to really dial back and say, you got your thousand. Now we're at like 1,500, but we're growing really slowly. And I have to constantly check myself not to overachieve it. It's like, you're fine. You made enough for the initial goal. You don't actually, less is not lazy. You can sit down. Mm -hmm. So something that has helped me um, for, you asked the question of how do you do less while getting these checks is that it sounds like you've already illustrated your Oprah. Now what I do is, and I'm very adamant about getting my money. Tiffany before, you know, so my keynote was $50,000, but it's been 50,000 since like last year, maybe the year before. Wasn't nobody really paying it. You know, you used to be putting that up there like, <laughs> it's 50. Oh, you want to do 20? Okay. Okay. Cause you're like 20 is good money now. No. No, it's 50. I had a big brand come to me the other day. They were like, oh, we don't have the budget. I was like, oh, well, I wish you well on your search for someone who's not 50 because I'm 50. Oh, well, can you? No. Now maybe they said 45. Maybe. I'd be like, eh, but it's 50. And they were like, oh, I don't know. Okay, well, call me when you got it because guess what? The brand before that and the brand before that and the brand before that and the brand because I have been illustrating my Oprah for 15 years. It's 50. Mm. And so they came back the next day and said, we found it. And I could tell they wanted me to be excited. I wasn't Where because was it was hiding? 50. Because if you didn't pay the 50, guess what? The next one was gonna. Sis, you better lock in that date with a contract. And they did. And guess what? Because I had five brands in a row, say 50, with relatively little pushback, I said 50 is too low. I'm 65 <laughs> now. Yes. For real. Just on Friday, I was like, girl, five brands in a row, 50? They said 50 too quick. I had that one itty bitty little bit of pushback. I think sounds about right. Well, I put, a, I put that 65. I said, let's see. And then I was like, you know, like once I get two or three people at 65, by the end of the year, I likely will be at 75 for a keynote. I got a good um, gut for randomly choosing numbers for things. <laughs> yeah, I do. I love me. a good. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. be. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Make it uh, make it 30. So I just say all that yeah. to say it sounds like so I don't know where you work. Maybe you need to lean in and ask for a raise um, for the current work that you're already doing. Um, to Mandy's point. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I'm learning in the boundaries book that's really good is delegation. You know, like to Mandy's point, are you are you giving more than what people are asking? She talks about that. Dr. Um, Dr. Nidra talks about that. Are you delegating? And something that's really important that I fall victim to, are you holding yourself hostage to um, the old you? Like, and to say like, oh, because I said that 1985 that I will do all the emails, I have to do that for the rest of my life. And she's like, at any moment in time, you can create a new boundary and say, y'all need to get on board. Don't think just because you used to do the job in this way, you know, that in a way that is not healthy for you or safe for you, that you cannot introduce a new boundary and get people on board. So just know that you can pop up with a new boundary for your own health and safety, and you ought to. So get more, ask for more, create boundaries, delegating. And honestly, like I don't, they don't, it's not ain't no money in it for us. We should put this link, this link, like the the um the what did I say it was called? Um the boundaries book. Like I don't, you know, I don't know her personally. I follow her on Insta, but set boundaries, find peace. I just think it's just a really great resource and tool from a black therapist who, and if, if you, even if you don't get her book, her Insta is really great for really leaning into like creating boundaries so you can have a safe, effective, fruitful, and joyful experience in life. And so like, I just suggest that for you as well. I love that. Yeah, we'll definitely put that in the show notes and mm -hmm. creating those boundaries when you have the energy to create them because it takes energy to put those in yes. place and get people acclimated. So that's why it's so important to do it before you need it, like the emergency fund for your brain, right? Ooh, but um, like one, last thing I, one last thing I wanted to note here is as well as I'm reading her and I'm thinking about her very much so if I'm imagining her job, which is working with, post, working with um, new mothers postpartum. Mm -hmm. If she's working for an employer right now and not for herself, I really wonder if working for yourself may not be another potential solution. Creating mm -hmm. your own business, dedicating, deciding your own hours, charging mm -hmm. prices that are, uh, you know, that make sense for the for the mental toll of what you're going going through, mm -hmm. and the fact that you need to charge higher prices so that 
you can take fewer clients so that you can show up 100% for the clients you have because they're relying on you. You know, mm-hmm. I would have, I don't even know what kind of particular work you do, but I know that your clients must use you as such a vessel for them and such a, Mm -hmm. you know, support for them. So for you to be able to show up for them in the best way possible, you can't have a thousand clients each charging Mm -hmm. a low fee. Maybe it's about having 100 clients charging a higher fee and protecting your peace in that way. And I'm not obviously saying that everyone should just go out and start a business to solve all their problems. Obviously it has so many more challenges, Mm -hmm. but I feel like in your potential, in your industry, with your skill set, you could bring in, and you did ask the question of how do you do it? How do you step away, but still bring in income? I had thought about that with my business as well. I mean, Tiffany, you're like the OG of creating an online education platform, a digital, a digital product that you mm-hmm. don't have to show up and necessarily teach every single day. You can record it and it can be available, you know, on and on down the road. And, mm-hmm. you know, for you, is there anything about your teachings and learnings that you could create a digital product and then sell that to create passive income? You know, is there a course that you could create? Is there, you know, a, oh, maybe not even a course that's too overwhelming. What about one 30 minute, you know, or 45 minute recap of everything that you've learned in your profession that has helped make a meaningful impact to the success of a a new mom or something like that? Package it, sell it, have an income stream. Um, Well, I'll say this and be mindful that, go ahead, especially with reoccurring income, no matter how dope you are, there's something called churn, which can be also very stressful. So just be mindful, anybody who's thinking about this. So for example, even with my mentor, Tiffany.com, right? Thousand people signed up, 1,500 people we have currently now, 15, maybe something. Already for the month, somebody might come in and say, ah, churn is when people leave monthly. And sometimes, oftentimes churn is because their credit card didn't go through, debit card didn't go through. Sometimes people, mm-hmm. for example, at um, My Mentor Tiffany, people confuse it with me being the budgetista. We don't talk about financial education there. So sometimes people will come and be like, oh, we don't talk about money here, just business. Oh, let me go over to the Literature Academy to join that. So they'll leave. So that's churn. And that means you have to, if you want to maintain your salary or whatever, you have to continuously add folks. And that can be very stressful. So just be mindful that if I was starting out, I, I don't know, like if it was me, instead of trying to get individual people purchasing whatever, I would instead look to get companies, like the same companies that I was working for, let them hire me as a contractor. Because that is a less stressful introduction into that kind of business. Because um, in so doing, like getting individual people signed up and continuing to pay, it's a lot. That's, that's, um, um, that's like level five. So for level one, it's being yourself for those same types of companies and those companies pay you. That's a good level one to start with. So just keep that in mind. But all in all, ask for more money, create boundaries, um, ask yourself, what is it that you're really wanting to do and start to make that pivot to like, what are your core values, security, Mm -hmm. adventure, joy, and really start to redesign life around those core values. And if that means leaving this profession down the line, maybe so, but you know, you only really have one life as far as I know. And so I'd much rather you start to make the make those pivots now and not wait for some major life-changing event like I had to to make the huge pivots. Because now, sis is living, I take my walks every day. I did my jump rope today. Thank you all for the jump rope videos. Like, <laughs> I work minimally, you know, relatively speaking. Everybody got to pay that price because I'm not doing three speaking engagements for the price of one. And so because I've set that boundary... And I put the work in, which sounds like you've done illustrating your Oprah. Now I can say I can do less. And do I make less? A little bit for now. But I'm seeing as I'm readjusting that I'm finding people who are willing to pay me more. And so by this time next year, I will have probably have made the same as I would have with a busy, busy, busy life, with a way less busy life. So, you know, that drop might might mean that you have to like drop some of your expenses temporarily until you can get back there. That's normal as well. So we wish you Mm. luck. Oprah. With rent increasing, inflation, everything more expensive. I completely empathize with feeling of I know something is wrong, but I don't know how to keep the life that I have and fix it at the same time. So think about, like Tiffany said, how can you start those boundaries now? Mm-hmm. And how, if any, of you know, how can you monetize potentially some skills that you have that won't require you to show up? And could that be an additional source of income so that you can take some take some time and think too about potentially that leave of absence, you know, 
Um, yeah. Sometimes we need like to call 911 for our damn selves. Mm-hmm. And like, I've definitely had clients where I'm like, I need to call 911. You need out. Like it's becoming an emergency. And um, I hope that you're well. Um, what do we decide to call her? Anonymous Oprah. Oprah. Hope yeah. that you're taking care of yourself <laughs> like you have for the moms and the the and your work. And thank you for the work that you're doing. Hope this was helpful. As a reminder, you guys hit us up brandambitionpodcast.com with your questions. Uh-huh. You can also shoot us a DM. We are at Brand Ambition Podcast on IG. Until next week, this was B-A-Q-A.